Breaking news in the Justice Department filing that heavily redacted version of the affidavit used in the warrant for the FBI search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. The DOJ had until noon to submit those proposed redactions and will need to provide a legal memorandum now explaining why they think specific information should be kept from public view. Magistrate Judge Bruce Reinhardt will now look at those redactions and then decide what, if anything, should remain public. For more now, let's bring in ABC News Washington reporter Jay O'Brien, also former chief minority counsel at the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations, Jeff Robbins. Jay, let's start with you. We've been waiting for this filing. Now that the DOJ has submitted its proposed redactions, what happens next? Well, Kira, this is one step in what's going to be a long process. The judge now has to review these proposed redactions, and then he might conference with the DOJ lawyers again. He might talk with them. He might propose his own redactions, depending upon what he reads. And then ultimately, he puts forward a document that he believes might be able to be released to the public. It's his decision which portions, if any, get released. And then if the DOJ doesn't like that, if there are portions that are in the judge's document that are not necessarily redacted, that they want redacted, they can Appeal, so you're looking at weeks of this. The DOJ ultimately does not like documents like this released in any case that's an active investigation, but particularly in a case like this that doesn't just involve a former president, but involves classified materials. So Jeff, what is it we could see in this affidavit and how could that jeopardize the investigation? Hi, Kira. Look, the first thing the Department of Justice wants to make sure never sees the light of day is the identities of those who are providing information on probable cause to the department. Nor do they want to have, nor can they afford to have information which may essentially effectively disclose the identity of those individuals. Nor further can they afford to have information which sets out the classified nature, the secret nature of the information that is uh, that, that was there in the first place. All of that would terribly impede the investigation, and there's no way that the department is going to permit that to be disclosed without appealing it exactly as was said. Now, you could imagine that information that's essentially already public now about the back and forth between the Trump team and the Department of Justice or the government, where the department asked or the government asked for information, and the Trump team said essentially either pound sand or uh, we're providing it to you, but actually they did not. That kind of information the magistrate may decide is worthy of being disclosed. Got it. And Jay, you know, Trump's legal team has not opposed efforts to unseal this affidavit. Uh, the former president has basically been treating this as both a legal problem and a PR problem. So what's the strategy here from his legal team? Well, they're not a party to this case legally. They didn't sign on to it in court. This is a case of media companies looking to unseal this affidavit, but he has said publicly he wants the complete unredacted affidavit released. So the question becomes, if a document eventually does get released, if it does have redactions, which it most likely will, even if it does get released, what does Trump then say to his supporters about those redactions, given his request to have the whole unredacted document released, which legally is most likely never going to happen. And Jeff, Trump's lawyers did ask federal judge Eileen Cannon, a, a Trump appointee, by the way, <laughs> to issue an order directing investigators to halt their review of materials taken from Mar-a-Lago pending the appointment of a special master. We've talked a lot about this. Do you think that's reasonable? No, this reminds me of the old uh, hamburger advertisement, uh, where's the beef? Uh, because there is no particular basis for there to be a special master. We have a special master. The name for the special master is the federal magistrate. That's what he gets paid or underpaid to do. If there are any actual issues that the Trump team has about any aspect of this and they have any basis for complaining, he is the one that they uh, ought to go to. So as far as I'm concerned, there's no basis for a special master, let alone trying to freeze the investigation while one is appointed. FYI, you just totally aged yourself with the where's the beef <laughs> reference, but I won't delve any deeper into that. But clearly us older folks are laughing in the studio right now. <laughs> Jay, um, the White House doesn't have any reaction so far because when the president was asked about this yesterday during a, a briefing that he was giving on the student loan forgiveness plan, he just said he knew nothing about what was gonna happen at Mar-a-Lago and he walked out the door. 
And while that was a brief comment, it was somewhat of a big deal because the president has dodged shouted questions about the Mar-a-Lago raid for weeks. Now he's saying, and he's saying what the White House has said repeatedly, which is that he had no advanced knowledge. He did not know about this raid before it occurred. The White House has repeatedly said, and they're continuing to say, that the president learned of the Mar-a-Lago search as it was happening on the news. Kira. All right, Jay, Jeff, thanks so much, guys. We'll talk a lot more this afternoon. Appreciate you both. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.